The KA-52 is one of the most feared helicopters in War Thunder. Let's check it out. In the early 1980s, the Kamov Design Bureau was working on what would become the KA-50, a new purpose-built attack helicopter built around a coaxial rotor system and, unusually, only one crew member. Soviet planners also saw the need for a new helicopter to perform combat scout duties and battlefield control missions. Several designs for that were considered, and it was felt that building a new helicopter based on the design of the KA-50 would be the best option. The coaxial rotor system offered excellent stability, and the internal structure of the KA-50 lent itself well to a nose redesign, and a new two-seat side-by-side cockpit was added along with new wings and a slightly modified tail structure. The collapse of the Soviet Union prevented Kamov from finishing the design, and new military projects were a low priority in the struggling Russian economy of the 1990s, so final design work proceeded quite slowly, with the first flight only taking place in 1997. Like other advanced post-Soviet Russian defense projects, the development budget was very tight, and it took another decade to get the helicopter ready for duty, and the KA-52 finally entered regular service in 2010. One side effect of the protracted development was that the final helicopter was much more advanced than originally envisioned, with a suite of modern combat systems capable of really performing almost any battlefield mission. The KA-52 is often considered by international experts as the most advanced combat helicopter in the world, and it performed well in combat operations against ISIS in Syria. However, recent combat experience in Ukraine has shown that even the most modern combat helicopters are still vulnerable to manpad missiles and good old-fashioned ambush tactics, with about two dozen being lost in combat over the last year. Currently, Russia is believed to have about 100 operational KA-52s as of June 2023, with Egypt as the only export customer operating another 45. What we're looking at in War Thunder is the KA-52, an attack helicopter in rank 7 of the Soviet and Russian tech tree at a battle rating of 11.7. The KA-52 has a fully featured combat system, with a CCIP for its unguided weapons, night vision, thermal sights, a 61x optical zoom, radar and laser warning receivers, a missile approach warning system, an auto tracker, sensor point of interest functions, and on top of this, it carries the RN-01 crossbow radar set in the nose. This is a multi-mode, search-only radar that can switch between air and ground targets. It also has multiple sweep angles and two re range presets for the scope, but it's search-only, so it doesn't lock targets. You wouldn't really need it to, though, since you've already got the auto tracker with the other sensors. Its gun is the 2A42 30mm cannon with 460 rounds of ammo, which can take an excellent APDS ammo belt. This is the same main gun as the BMP2 ground vehicle, but it only has a limited field of fire on the right-hand side of the helicopter. For loadouts, this thing can take gun pods, rocket pods, and dumb bombs, in addition to guided missiles. Its outboard pylons are reserved for air-to-air -air weapons, with the other four carrying air-to-ground weapons. The air-to-air -air missile is the 9M39 Igla. This is an all-aspect weapon with fairly average general performance among top-tier missiles, and critically, it has a caged seeker, so using it against fast-moving targets can be a little tricky. Its first anti-tank missile is the 9M120 Ataka. This is a beam-riding missile with an effective kill range of around 5 kilometers and a reasonably good tandem heat warhead. This will be your primary weapon when grinding upgrades. Its top weapon is the 9K127 Vigor. This is another beam-riding missile with pretty good speed, an effective combat range a little over 9 kilometers, and a slightly stronger tandem heat warhead. The Vigor also has a proximity fuse, making it useful against enemy helicopters as well as ground targets. 
The flight performance of the Ka-52 is unlike any other helicopter in the game, outside of the Ka-50 which it's based on. To get the obvious out of the way, being a coaxial helicopter, the Ka-52 has no tail rotor. This means that 100% of its engine power is fed directly through the transmission into its main rotors, and combined with its stub wings, this generates an enormous amount of lift. The Collective and Cyclic are both very responsive, despite the Ka-52's large size and weight. The coaxial design uses controlled dissymmetry of torque to manage horizontal rotation, which has pros and cons. It retains all of its turning performance at higher speeds, especially combined with the conventional control surfaces on the tail. However, it starts rotating a little slower than a regular helicopter in a dead hover, which sometimes makes it feel a little sluggish when dodging missiles are engaging in a dogfight, but really it just takes a little practice to get the feel for it. If you flew the Ka-29 before this in the tech tree, you kind of know what to expect. It's got that same half-second rotation delay, but once you get adjusted to it, you really won't have any problems. Now that said, it's still quite maneuverable, especially in forward flight. And honestly, when flying forward, it sometimes feels a little bit more like a fighter than a helicopter. Now, depending on your control setup, you can pull off loops, barrel rolls, circle strafing, and even Immelman turns if you get your speed up a little bit. Speaking of which, you can safely cruise a bit over 320 kilometers an hour, and I'm pretty sure you can just kind of ignore the speed warning. I've had the Ka-52 up to around 325 in sustained forward flight, with no trouble. The biggest performance issue I ran into is that the Ka-52 sometimes doesn't like to slow down. I often use a short, like, angled pitch braking maneuver where I rotate sideways and pitch the oppo opposite direction, almost like doing a skid turn in a car. It might be confirmation bias, but to me, this feels like it works a little bit better than just pitching backwards in forward flight. Taking the Ka-52 out into battle really just depends on how many spawn points you have. Now, I want to get this out of the way up front. The correct way to use this helicopter in the top tier meta is just using its Vigor missiles from 7 or 8 kilometers away from the battlefield, dodging in and out of cover, repositioning after every shot. You can do that, I do that, and that's how I fly when I'm playing purely for score. But I'm only showing a couple of segments of that in the footage, because I really want to stress how versatile this thing is. If you don't have any SPAA up on the other team, you can just hover out in plain sight much closer to the battle and just rack up the kills, pounding people with missiles and rockets, without bothering much for cover. And since it's a Russian helicopter in the Soviet tree, you very rarely have to go up against the Panzer and the Chinese Tor is probably going to be your biggest individual threat in the middle of 2023. Still, like all helicopters, it's vulnerable to sustained machine gun fire, and it's not super hard to bring this thing down, especially if you're going in close for a rocket pass or something. Now with that said, the rockets on this thing are quite good, and you totally can go in for an early game rocket pass and get a kill or two, and you can even go in for a conventional bombing run, as crazy as that sounds, in a top-tier helicopter. But just know in advance, you're gonna get dogpiled and shot down the vast majority of the time you try that nonsense. The standoff missile meta remains the safest and most effective way to play. Now, some other considerations are that the cannon on this thing is actually really effective, both against ground targets and other helicopters, and the APDS rounds can do some pretty heavy damage. Against helicopters, the Vigor missiles actually end up being a bit better than the Eaglas. Now, the Eaglas do have the advantage of being fire and forget, while the Vigors are much easier to target with and they can't be flared off. The last thing to mention is that the Vigor missile uses a tandem heat warhead, so where you hit on the target matters a lot. I personally don't have the ammo storage on the weak points on every ground vehicle memorized, so you often see me taking two shots in the footage, and a couple of kills took three, but if you're better than I am with the targeting, it might only take you one accurate hit from a lot of angles. 
Visually, the KA-52 is a pretty badass looking piece of machinery. I love the coaxial design with the stub wings, and its unconventional design is really appealing. You get five different skins for it, three Russian ones, an unpainted prototype, and the Egyptian Nile crocodile paint job. I personally prefer the Egyptian skin, but really all of them look pretty good. Landing the KA-52 isn't bad, but it does take a little practice. The coaxial rotor design puts out a lot of lift, and touching down can sometimes be a little bit more blunt than usual. Oh, and don't forget to drop the landing gear. One last thing to remember is that friendly fire is a thing for helicopters and ground battles, so be careful. A lot of people really don't like the KA-52, even when it's on their team. To close out on the KA-52 Alligator. This helicopter has a combat sensor system with almost every feature in the game, including a radar set. It carries a huge load of exceptionally potent weapons. It's fast, it's got a very effective auto cannon. it's reasonably maneuverable, plus this thing just has a serious attitude problem. However, it's still fairly easy to shoot down at close range. It has a very distinctive sound that enemy players will hear and recognize. Its air-to-air -air missile is somewhat difficult to target with, and everybody hates you. The final verdict on the KMOV KA-52 is that this thing is an absolute monster in just about every combat scenario, and it's likely to remain one of the top one or two helicopters in War Thunder for quite some time. As always, thanks for watching.